Hello and welcome back to Edge Case Collective's Undefined Behavior. I am still your host, the ever lovely and ever present Glitch Witch. I am hanging out literally and figuratively with our next runner, the dear sweet Arborelia. Hi, I'm Arborelia. What are you playing us for us today? I'm playing Napletail, and this is a game that means a lot to me. Um, and you know, I think I hope I'll have a lot of time to explain why during the run when I'm not trying to explain the plot of the game. Um, yes. So before we go, do I have time to read off a quick donation that is near and dear to me? Definitely. So Lucky Starscream has donated ten dollars, saying, "Hi, Elia. Best of luck on the run." Emoji heart. Donation goes to naming Kane. RM space dash RF space backslash because he'll delete ya. <laughs> and uh, I guess one more. Yeah, go for it. And we have $50 from Zahariel saying, For my extremely puzzling friends, Arborelia and Glitchwitch, I lost a friend to suicide in high school and maybe the Trevor Project would have been able to help her. Stay safe and keep gaming. Thank you so much, both of you, for your donations. Thank you, Zahariel. Okay. All right. It. All right, cool. So this is going to be Napple Tail, um, all songs, and it's going to be a sing-along because you all donated for this donation incentive where uh, I get to uh, slightly ruin the uh, lovely songs that have lyrics in this game with my own voice. And I, I, I hope we all have a good time. And so I guess we're going to get started, right? Yeah, I can catch okay. you in if you like. All right. I guess it's just tradition at this point. Uh, just let me know when you're ready. I, am I, I ready. will tell chat I am not singing. I am not here to ruin songs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one, and go. All right. So uh, the game's just going to start with a prologue. It's going to, you know, have just some text introducing. Hey, Elliot, at your earliest opportunity, if you could boost your audio, that'd be great. My game audio? Oh, okay. Sorry, yes, okay. Okay, so start with this prologue. Note that the, the prologue is in English, that this this is the English patch of the game, which was made by Cargo Din. Uh, they are awesome, and they put a whole lot of research into, you know, finding the right translation for a lot of things, like researching a lot of the inspirations for this game. Um, and that brought this game to the English-speaking audience, and it's really exciting. So how did you find this game? Yes. Um, so... I think I might not have time to explain that before I need to start singing. Um, oh, okay. Hold on. Yes. <laughs> Let's, I'll not interrupt the song. It's time for me to be quiet. Sort of. All right. But yes, we're going to see this this girl. Her name is Porch. And she's going to a summer festival. And uh, she's going to have a bit of a weird experience at this summer festival. And there's a song. あさかきたよ She's being, you know, separated from her friends. There's a mysterious orb. Don't touch the orb, Porch. Oh no, she touched the orb. Daremo karemo petsu no soro miteru. Michio とりあえず急がなきゃの時の場所マニアオヨニマニアオヨニ走れ混沌の謎の中いつも真実は嘘の中 
Itae, Sonzai no Yami no Naka. Itsuka, Shin Jitsuwa Kimi no Naka. Itsumo, Shin Jitsuwa Yami no Naka. Itsuka, Shin Jitsuwa Kimi no Naka. All right, so she just like kind of like started having an extremely surreal experience at the summer festival and um and she's like face down on a flower clock and there are fairies and uh she might not be in the same world anymore. As it happens, you know, it happens to the best of us. Mhm. Mm and she is about to get a wonderful new outfit. Here we go. This is Porch, and she is now impossible to cosplay. I mean, you can just get yourself a, a nice, hilariously large backpack and just wear it everywhere you go. <laughs> I don't think isekai was, like, a thing in 2000, but it's kind of an isekai, I guess. <laughs> All right, so here we are. Um, here's Porch uh, in this bridge to some mysterious new world, and uh, she's about to meet her companion uh, named Straynap, um, who is who is this idiot? Um, and yeah, so the deal here is that Straynap is like new on the job as like the spirit guide who guides people's souls to the afterlife. He's like being really dramatic about it. He's like, I'm the Grim Reaper. And um, Porch is a little startled to learn that she's supposed to be dead. Uh, she did not think, that, you know, this was really not in her plans for the evening. Uh, and she's, you know, really not convinced about it. Um, and uh, she's gonna be a little more convinced in a moment because those were uh, the six petals of her soul all flying away from her. And uh, yes, they're free now. They are not no longer bound to her soul. Um, and yeah, so this is an issue because Porch really isn't supposed to be dead. Straight up messed up. Um, this game has a lot of dialogue and I can mash through the dialogue, um, but I can also uh, hold turbo because turbo is a good thing in RPGs that have a lot of dialogue. My wrists actually did get pretty tired when I used to mash. Uh, and, I, and you know, as the runner of this game, I get to decide this kind of thing. Um, Community has spoken. Yes. Um, anyway, so here we are in the cutest purgatory. It's called Napletown. The Divine Comedy is an isekai. So here's Minister Druid, uh, and he's here to tell Straynap that he totally hacked up, that he has the wrong person. In fact, the, pers uh, the soul that he was supposed to take to the Underworld is not a person at all. It was a cat named Porsche. Uh, not Porch. And Porch is like, okay, hey, why do you keep calling me Porsche? Get my name right. And uh, Straynap's like, um, let me check my notes. And here's the contract for the soul. And yeah, yeah, this is for a cat. Um, so Porch is pretty happy to learn that she's not supposed to be dead. And, um, but, you know, here she is in Napletown. And also there are miscellaneous children. You let me know when there is a break in explanation here, or if there's just a plot-heavy part that I can talk over. Um, this is a plot-heavy part. I'll, I, can, I don't want to throw all of my donations out to the wind all at once, but I can, I can give you one. Okay. I have five dollars from Kate Lipsy saying this is a donation to wish Elia the best of luck. Thank you, Kate Lipsy. I do have a request in your fast forwarding. Not fast forwarding, but auto. Mm -hmm. Whale boss, I want you to read the puns. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So Thank yeah, you. so yeah, now we have to be accompanied by Strainup, who messed everything up in the first place, but he's going to try to help us now. And we're going to get introduced to uh, a clown. This is Piero, and, you know, he is um, a little weird. 
and he offers us to, uh, to uh, perform on the platform. That would be the tutorial. Um, I slowed down for a minute there because I really do not want to do the tutorial, and now we've just been given the items that we would get during the tutorial, and this thing, this heckin' cute thing, is called a Pathet. Pathets are these, like, mysterious beings that can follow us around and help us. And uh, Porch is going to sass Strain up a little more. Because um, she's like, oh, hey, yes, I can trust Strain up with my life, right? Uh, but anyway, she's being introduced to more characters. Here's Melee. He runs an item shop called the Mystery Gift Shop. And that is also Mayor Frog Car. He's the mayor of this town, and he is both a frog and a car. Here's Porch's walk cycle. For when we're not in control of her. <laughs> um... So yeah, a bit of an experimental thing about this run is this is the first speedrun of this game I'm doing with turbo setup. Um, it should shave some time off unless I choose a dramatically wrong option with it later in the game. Shout out to Alice. Mm-hmm. Anyway, because everything here so far is Stray Nap's fault, he's going to give us a place to live while we're in Appletown. We get to live in his ice cream parlor. And that's where we are now. It's called 13 Ice Cream. And, you know, we're just taking a look around the, the hallway here, and he's showing us to our room. And Porch is like, hey, wow, um, why do you have a room already set up for a teen girl? And he's like, um, that's a secret? Which, <laughs> it is a very good question. But anyway, uh, let's not save the game. We don't really need to do that, but let's go to sleep. And that will advance the plot. There's a lot of questions that this game might raise up, mm -hmm. but you know. Aww. All right. Anyway, good morning. There's there's going to be more explanation. Um, yes. So, how I learned about this game was that you know sometime in the early 2000s I was browsing around. I think it might have been LimeWire. I think Napster was dead by then. But, you know, I'm looking for Yoko Kano music because I'm super into Yoko Kano. And uh, I found uh, an MP3 labeled, you know, Yoko Kano, Napple Tale, Folly Fall. And I listened to it and it was fantastic. And then I needed to find out what Napple Tale was. And it's like, hey, Yoko Kano scored a video game. Um... Yes, so, yeah, we're just going to be introduced to Melee again here because he needs to give us some items, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the crafting mechanic in this game. Because uh, the way that you get Pathets is by putting them together out of ingredients. And the way you get ingredients is by taking apart random items you find in the world. So Pathets are these uh, things that follow us around. Uh, anyway, now it's time, uh, as long as I remember what I'm doing, to go uh, talk to somebody in town named Alice. You might notice that this game has a bit of an Alice in Wonderland vibe to it. Um, it is not strictly in the plot of Alice in Wonderland or anything. Porch is not Alice. This is Alice. She is very tired because um, her dreams are haunted by, in fact... Uh, a rabbit from Wonderland. Like, this is the, that Alice. And, yeah, we have to solve her problem. She can't sleep because she's get, she gets nightmares. And now, we're very close to getting to go into an actual level. Um, and the levels in this game are platforming levels. And that's where we're going to, like, find our items and defeat our bosses. And, uh, but we have to be interrupted by the small child who's going to tell us of the importance of bringing the seasons back to Napletown. The seasons are all out of balance, and this overachieving young girl is distraught because if spring can't happen, then school can't start. And she really wants school to start, and so she's showing us the school. Um, if you read the text on the sign, it's something about Alphonse Mucha, who I, who, um, is like that artist, like of, like, posters, like French posters from like 1900 or so, and he seems to be an influence on this game also. Anyway, here's a level. New Year's Day, y'all. Get your resolutions ready. Mm -hmm. 
So yes, the different times of year are places that you go from the town. Hi, Nausicaa. That's great. Yes. All right. So uh, we're about to start the level, but first Porch has to like remark on, hey, where is that excellent music coming from? And Strana's like, oh, it's the, the whispers with the pedals. Um, but yes. Um, so yeah, anyway, like I found, I found this game, like I found out that this game existed uh, because I knew that Yoko Kano had composed the music for it. And I started, like, I found the soundtrack, and the soundtrack is amazing. Um, and uh, it is available wherever fine video game soundtracks are downloaded. Um, hold on. I need to get myself a thing. All right. This thing that has the text box that pops up that says Napple, that is a Napple seed. Um, and it's basically a heart piece. When I get four of them, I'll get an extra heart on my health bar. Uh, that was an enemy dropping... I don't know, are these hearts, are they themselves Napples? Who knows? I think they're peaches. Not that. Well, Quite I mean, possibly. Okay, no, it's Napples. The game uh -huh. calls it Napples, it's Napples. I get mm -hmm. it. Yeah, they are probably Napples of health. Um, alright. So now, uh, Porch is like, hey, haven't, like, you know, why is there a house in the middle of the level? And straight up's like, oh, uh, he's gonna explain that, um, every building in town has a corresponding building in one of the seasons. Um, so here is Alice again, but this is the spring version of Alice, and um, she is uh, young, and she's the one, like, currently having the nightmares. Um, and um, Strain Up tries to help and is not very helpful. <laughs> um, her friend CL is very impressed with how hard that she smacks uh, Strain Up out of there. Anyway, now we've met um, young Alice and understand a little bit more about her problem, uh, but we're going to have to play a little more before we can do anything about it. Um, jumping through hoops is entirely style points because you get coins from it, and there is no purpose to coins in this speedrun. What if you get a high score? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are things in this game that affect your score. The score does not even appear on the screen. It appears on the Dreamcast controller in the, the VMU unit, um, which I'm not using a Dreamcast controller, so... Oh, heck. Missed that jump. I no longer know what I'm trying to jump on. Okay. Cool. All right. Yes. So, yes. So, there were multiple reasons that once I learned about this game and its amazing soundtrack that I couldn't play it. One is that it was a Dreamcast game. I do not have a Dreamcast. I'm going to save. This boss is not scary at all, but I have never saved at all, and so that is a thing that I should do. Um, hi, Vani. Thank you. All right, so we're coming to a boss, and... Um, Porch is gonna be like, wait, why does everything suddenly smell bad? It's a dialogue. <laughs> mm -hmm. It smells like actual butt is such a good line. <laughs> yep. That one's later. <laughs> so right now, Strain is like, does it smell like poopy? Um, but yes, so there are these monsters called Pamera, and they are throwing the seasons into chaos, and we need to do something about that. Um, so here we have a snake who um, is like trying to hibernate and is a little upset if we make spring actually happen um and is gonna fight us about that but mostly we can just stand behind the snake and hit it a lot and it and it's like it doesn't attack it's in many directions besides forward so that's the boss see ya boss so yeah, and I learned about this game, and it was only in Japanese, and only for the Dreamcast, uh, putting two barriers in the way of me being able to play it. Uh, and, you know, I, and so I just kind of resigned myself to not really know what this game was for many years. Like, eventually, game playthroughs on YouTube come along, and I see it, and it's like, oh my god, that has so much dialogue. I'm trying to learn Japanese, but I will never be able to understand this game, like, any time this decade. Um, but then... Um, just, you know, last year, 
um, Cargoden came up with the English patch, making this game a lot more accessible, and we can play it in RetroArch, uh, which is perfectly competent at emulating the Dreamcast. Um, here's Minister Druid again. Uh, he's going to give us some more stuff and saying, hey, we need to craft some stuff. Um, he's also telling us about, about Napple Seeds, those things that are going to give us health eventually. Um, and so, yeah, Serena's like, oh, yeah, you don't know how to craft things. I'm going to show you. And he's taking us to the crafting room. And we get this bizarre cuckoo clock music. Um, and so here's the crafting mechanic where you take the <laughs> items that you collect in the levels um, and uh, you put them into this, like, little 3D puzzle thing um, where you're going to find, like, three or four elements that uh, constitute the object. And you're going to take it apart into those elements. And you have to, like use these different colored filters to find all of the, the, the significant points on the object. Um, yeah, a bit of a bummer about the speedrun is that we only are going to deliberately craft one thing. Um, and that's the one path that we need because it gives us health, and health is very useful to have. Um, uh, Straight Up is explaining to us that if you don't know the recipe for a thing, you can guess it, but it's probably not worth the risk. Of course we're going to take that risk. It's not a risk. We know all the recipes that we need. <laughs> um, but Straight Up is now making us a vending machine. Uh, this is a gotcha machine, in fact. You put your coins into it and you get random items, and we're not going to be using it. But that is the one purpose for coins in this game. Alright, so... Um, I have this uh, highlighted note in my notes that says, get your cheer wall. It is uh, important to go and get that pathet that we were introduced to uh, at the circus. So this is the pathet room. This is where pathets live when we're not uh, when we're not using them. And we need to go find the cheer type room. Um, also, Cheerwool is adorable. Uh-huh. In fact, most of the Paffets are adorable, but Cheerwall is really good. <laughs> it's a narwhal that cheers for you. Mm-hmm. I should remember to, like, use it before, like, before, like while I still have it. Oh, facing the wrong way. It's so cute. Look at it. Well, when it's on screen, you can't look at it right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going too fast for it to show up behind me. Um, but yeah, oh, heck, I'm in the wrong path again. Where's spring? This way's spring. I'm sorry. Um, so anyway, we got to continue this plot with Alice. We could do this, you know, later in the game, except then we wouldn't get this sequence break that is the one sequence break I know of in the game, where if we solve Alice's problem early enough, we get to skip an entire side quest that would block us off from the level. Um, she's like, yeah, I want to sleep. Why am I so afraid? Um, and, um, well, we're going to talk to her about a little bit more about it. We're going to have a tea party with Alice. And um, she's telling us about her blanket collection. And we're asking, hey, um, when you were younger, what did you really want? And she's like, well, I wanted like a companion, like that cheer wall that's following you. I wanted one so much. And so, hey, we're in a position to do something about that. We are going to... Um, well, in a moment, we're going to go back into the level, but also we need to go check out this school. So, like, we brought back a little piece of spring, and maybe that means that school can start. And so, um, the headmaster has decreed that the music of spring will start, but the problem is that the music of spring that's being played by this player piano is all hecked up, and it's making the children dance on their own as if they're possessed, and this is no way to start a school year. Um, so this is now going to be a problem that we have to do something about. Alright, so he's declared the piano a, a dirty piece of garbage, and we're going to talk about, okay, like, um, well, can anybody fix it? Maybe. Um, all right, so one other thing in the school, we open the chest, it's got an apple seed in it, and apple seeds are really good. Well, we're just going to get four of them, because I feel so much safer having six apples of health than having five. Uh, 
um, yeah, so now we're going to go back into the level because we have to uh, solve young Alice's entire problem before we go into another level, and that's going to get us our sequence break. Can I, uh, mm -hmm. do I have a moment? Yes, you do have a moment. I have two donations to read. Yeah, you donations. Everyone's favorite moment. Uh, I have yes. Nicolette with $20 saying good luck and have fun, Arbor Elliot. With a little cheery emoji face. Uh, Bloodstained Soul. Okay, now I'm paraphrasing, but Cecil Ruby and Rosa Sapphire. And they split the donation two ways, which is super good. And uh, Dijon Ketchup saying, I'm as good at coming up with donation comments, but let's just name Rydia Dijon. Yay. Thank you, both of you, so much for your donations. All right, Cheerwell's gonna thank you for your donation, too. <laughs> I love Cheerwall. It's really kind of a pity we don't get to keep Cheerwall. If we wanted to keep Cheerwall, we'd have to come back to this level a third time, and that is just not a thing to do. Oh, heck. Um. And uh, what Cheerwall, I think, does is, I think it like, doubles all the points that you get. Yeah, it doubles your score during the clapping. That is all. <laughs> All right, so here's young Alice again, and I'm going to not mash here um, because I have to choose the right menu item. But yes, this is the path she's always wanted. Um, and now we're going to try to help her with her dreams. And we have to clean up some items uh, from the room. This is actually going to affect things, which three items we pick. Um, so... I'm going to pick the three that I'm familiar with that seem to lead to a good next level. So there we go. Uh, okay. And now we have to pick the right blanket. It is extremely important. We need to pick the rabbit blanket. Uh, otherwise, Alice will not be able to get to sleep, and we'll just get booted out of the level, and that's what would happen if I just mashed. Anyway, creepy poem. What has two long, long horns, and lurks in the dawnless forest? What has eyes of bloodshot red, and lurks in the dawnless forest? We're gonna find out, because we're going inside Alice's dream. Here's Wonderbed. It's a level inside a level. Alice's Wonderbed. It's important to do our stretches as we start every level. Yes. Yep. Portion story, and we're just going to talk a bit about um, about why we're here. And um, the idea is, uh, straight up, is pointing out that um, young Alice actually has one of our petals. And weird things happen to the characters who end up with our petals, and this is one of them. And if we can solve her problem, we'll get our petal back. Oh. All right. You saw me getting slightly stuck on an edge, which is one of the most frustrating things about the controls in this game, is when you, like, when you hit the edge of a platform, you just kind of hover there for a moment, and I don't think there's anything meaningful you can do to determine whether you actually get on the platform. Um, it's kind of frustrating. Haha. -ha. Yeah, th th this game has been Arthur Elia's first introduction to, like, playing a Dreamcast game, whereas, like, I have a Dreamcast tattoo. I love Dreamcast games. They all play, like, a particular level of jank that plays into all of them. That is none... It, 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 it is super prominent in this title as well. I just got smashed by a bunny slipper. Uh, if we had cleaned up the bunny slippers, then I'm... Oh. I'm getting smashed by everything. It's okay, though. <laughs> so if you cleaned up the bunny slippers, they wouldn't be there? Yep. That's cool. Yep, here are the crayons. They are neatly stacked instead of, like, electric and trying to hurt us. Um, and, like, the one other thing is that we cleaned up the blocks, and the blocks are going to make a neat horizontal platform instead of being all over the place. And so that makes this section a lot faster. Those things dispense hearts. Those are very useful. The thing is, they dispense hearts very slowly. So um, if you 
end up too low on health. If I end up too low on health, I might have to wait around at one of those uh, heart dispensers for a while. Um, because there are not really that many ways of getting health back. Anyway, we've reached the boss. And Porter's like, oh, that's not a boss, that's a cute bunny rabbit. And she's like, yeah, let me go hug the bunny rabbit. And Stern Ab's like, no, 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 do not mess with that bunny rabbit. Um, and yes, so we have a uh, scary pirate bunny that is the March Hare. And we need to defeat it. Because it is ruining Alice's dreams. Now, the main thing about this uh, boss is that we just have to catch up with it. Especially difficult because it's swinging around this watch next to it. Ah. And of course, the only attack that Porch has is to uh, swing at things with her racket wand thing. Whoa. And this is spookier than usual. And there's um there's a certain scariness to boss fights because if you if you die anywhere in this game, it gives you a checkpoint you can go back to. If you die during a boss fight, it sends you back to your save file. Anyway. Yep, there is just no continuing if you die on a boss. You just gotta load a save. Anyway, we are we have knocked some sense into this bunny rabbit. Uh, we also need to knock some sense into his watch. Uh, the thing is that uh, he's got a watch that's stuck on March o'clock, and that's driving him mad or something. Um, and this has to do with a scheme concocted by the Mad Hatter, who does not appear in this game except in this description. Um, and this is the last we'll hear of those Wonderland characters. Is it song time? It is just about song time. <laughs> I hope you all followed that explanation of why young Alice's dreams are haunted by a rabbit. もう帽子屋の布団とは一緒に重ねちゃダメだよって教えてあげた。そんなわけで私は進む時のペタルを取り戻すことができたんだ。Tak chik susumu sampo michi. Ach koch susum de maya wanu yoni. Kompasu mote fura rurara. So yeah, we got one of our petals back. And this, this cute fairy is the petal. And uh, it's rejoining our body and we're feeling pretty good. Um, and there's going to be some dialogue where Porch is like, Hey, I got another petal because the game really did not intend that this... Um, to be our first pedal, but it's going to deal with it just fine. And again, this is the only sequence break I know in the game, but it's very useful. Oh, anyway, Young Alice is saying goodbye to us. And says, tell the other me hello. Um, and we're back in our room. Every time we get a pedal, uh, we need to go to sleep. And also every time we get a pedal, it gives us this bonus pathet, um, which is a pathet that we could use uh, to open up a bonus room somewhere in one of the uh, levels uh, that was involved in getting that pedal. Um, but now Stranap's telling us, hey, you should get some sleep. We've got a city hall meeting in the morning. And Forge is like, a city hall meeting? Huh. Um, okay. <laughs> Um, but yes, turns out this is very important. This is how every day needs to begin now. And every day also begins with Porch and Serena Nap's morning routine. Um, um, and Porch is like, hey, I just need a moment to get ready. Um, 
And we're gonna stop and water the um, nepple plant thing. Um, and that's to uh, deposit the uh, two nepple seeds we got. And we got four of them, that's when we'll get our extra heart. And we finally get to heal. Um, cool. But also we have to talk to a rocking chair. Uh, the rocking chair talks to us in Pathet language. Um, we're trying to ask Strain up what it means, and Strain up's being kind of cryptic about it. Um, if we were, like, doing all the quests in this game, we would have to, like, kind of understand what Pathets are asking for. But, uh, no, we're not, not gonna understand that in this game. Alright, oh yes, talk to Strain up. So, we are ready to go to the City Hall meeting. I don't know if it's 15 minutes worth of side quest, um, but it's like you gotta find the right items and craft a thing and talk to one of the children and stuff. And that is, um, anyway. Yeah, there's a jerk storming out of the city hall meeting. Um, after just like yelling at everyone. Um, here's, here's CL, um, who is the small child who we would have had to interact with to unblock the level, um, but now it doesn't matter. Here's Alice, she's still tired. Turns out if you had insomnia forever, getting one good night of sleep is not enough. Um, all right, now we're going to talk to, oops. Um, we need to talk to Melee in the mystery gift shop because he knows what to do about the pianola thing. And Porch is like, wait, why do we have to solve this headmaster's problem anyway? Um, and Strain Up's like, you know, hey, no, you have to do side quests. That's, like, your your purpose. And you'll never get your pedals back if you don't do, like, do errands for people in the town. Uh, pretty much. So, anyway, we've got that established. And now I'm gonna head back towards the spring. This is towards the spring, right? Yeah. Okay, so now we get to go into another level. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I made an MSU1 hack for ALTTP, uh, ALTTP Rando uh, that uses Nappletail music. It fits very well in the game. And yeah, so now I have Nappletail music while playing Nappletail and while playing Link to the Past. I really like this music, by the way. Yes. Enough to... Pursue and speedrun an entire video game. Mm -hmm. But this level's music in particular, I often use it as my stream starting and ending music. Alright, so the deal is that um, we need to talk to the piano maker, Geiger, uh, and we need to tell him that there's a problem with this piano and that school can't start unless he fixes it. So that's uh, what we're doing right now. And that's the uh, the spring version of the school in the distance. And Porter's like, wait, how do I get there? It's way over there. And then uh, Strain Up shows us the teleport teleporter gate thing. Helpfully labeled gate. When you stand Yokokano so hard, you learn a speed run. Exactly. That is actually exactly how it happened. Not even like learn, like yeah. route. And like, and so like I knew about this game and like I saw some like clips of it on YouTube and I knew that like I probably wouldn't be able to play it. Um, and then I finally got to play the game and it turns out I really enjoy the game. It's good. I like RPG stuff. I like platforming. I like things that are extremely cute and colorful. Um, anyway, so Geiger's like, hey, I don't know how to fix the piano. I haven't even made that piano yet. Time is all weird, remember? And then this kid named Cole you know, storms in and is like, you know, hey, turns out Geiger's not going to fix the piano because he sucks at building pianos. And um, thus taunted, Geiger's like, okay, well, I guess I'll figure out how to fix a piano from the future. Um, but I'm going to need some tools to do it. So go get my toolkit from Ms. Winky. Is that the kid that hits on you really awkwardly? No, it looks like he looks identical, but this kid is actually the, as, as I understand it, the young version of the headmaster. Um, he, he gets, he gets more mature, I guess, in the time between this level and Nappletown, however time works. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so that's the thing, time's all weird, he, and that's why we're asking Geiger to fix a piano that he hasn't built yet. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna go talk to Ms. Winky, um, 
We could have talked to Ms. Winky in town, but no, like, there's no reason to talk to her in town, so we're just gonna barge into her house like we know her, even though this is the first time we're meeting her. Hi, Ms. Winky. And, like, hey, we need your tools. And so this incentive has me singing over the songs in this game, which are the opening song, the six pedal songs, like that you get when you collect one of your pedals, and the ending song. And um, I'm aware that I am, you know, kind of, you know, messing with a good thing. Um, Porch is voiced by Maya Sakamoto, and she also sings the songs. And Maya Sakamoto is, you know, a legendary J-pop singer and, you know, anime um, voice actress. So um, me singing over her is kind of like that person who painted over the Jesus fresco and tried to fix it and it, and did not fix it. But you know, I like getting to sing along. I think your singing is better than that. Let's, <laughs> let's not sell yourself super, yeah, super short. Yeah, but it's Maya Sakamoto. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fair. <laughs> I can read the donation. Go for it. I think I should wait. Uh, we have $20 from Royal Blue Wizard. Donating to a good cause, a good streamer, a good friend, and a good run. I believe in you to make the last one true. Thank you, Edge Cases, for being your wonderful selves and having an awesome marathon. Putting this towards pseudo for Sid, because Unix humor is the highest form of comedy. Thank you, RBW. Thanks, RBW. Anyway, the piano is fixed. Now the music is, like, correct, and school can start. And we need to deliver a message to Geiger that he is the world's bestest piano crafty man. This is a direct quote from one of the children. Um, so, that means we need to go back into the Wild Wind. So I hope that by bringing this game to an audience of more people, I can get people interested in playing the game because, yes. you know, there's an English patch that you can just, you know, a fan translation that you can just go get um, and uh, apply to your, you know, Napple Tail image, however you acquire it. And, um, and I'm also hoping I can get people interested in speedrunning it because it's a pretty fun speedrun. It's, you know, also a pretty chill speedrun. Um, not too many high stress moments in the game except for a couple of, of bosses and mostly because of that bizarre decision that dying on a boss is, you know, permanent that you have to reload your save file. Um, but yeah, it's a good speed run and it's just about three hours at this point. Um, I mean, you cut the sub three recently, right? Yeah. In all songs? Yeah, I yeah. recently beat the... Uh, uh, the three hour mark by an entire two seconds. That was my last run of this game. Anyway, we're here to thank Geiger, and here young Rose is telling us, uh, Mr. Geiger is gone. He drifted away like a leaf on the wind, something like that. Um, and yeah, it turns out that because he fixed his piano, um, he had accomplished his purpose in Napple World, and he got to get reincarnated. And so good for Geiger. Um, seems like there are a couple people who will miss him, but, uh, yeah, and he has left behind his, uh, his, uh, sentiments in the form of musical notes in this level, and we need to collect some of the musical notes because they are going to turn into platforms at the end of the level. Um, now, you're supposed to, like, hunt up and down for a bunch of different musical notes, but it turns out that if we get... Only the musical notes that are like the ones that we directly encounter, like not that one down there. If we just get all the musical notes along the way, that is pretty much just the right number of musical notes that we'll be able to finish the level. The discovery of these musical notes are um, actually helping us beat the level was a fun discovery. 
Mm -hmm. And then learning you don't need to get all of them. Yep. But I mean, I guess it's, um, y'all, you're just tuning in, just showed up, like, hey, what's this cool, fun channel? Oh, heck. Edge Case Collective on the internet. Uh, speaking of Edge Case, that was that Edge problem. <laughs> <laughs> you are watching Undefined Behavior, a showcase and speedrunning marathon centered around queering games and queerness in games. For this marathon, we're exploring glitchy, unusual, and marathon unsafe runs, as well as adjacent and related queer gaming content. We create games and reject limits and rules, where we play in atypical ways and when we read diversity of stories and themes. This is the very first Undefined Behavior Marathon, which I have given the fun nickname of the First Behavior, which is not sanctioned by Undefined Behavior, but people seem to like it. Um, so we're excited to share these games and showcases with you. Tristan, please do not juggle chainsaws ever. <laughs> All right, we got more of these hammers to deal with. I might get deliberately flattened. Oops, I might get deliberately flattened by one of them if it would help a cycle. Zoe, that gives me two votes. <laughs> nope. I'm just gonna wait. Heck, no, I should have gotten flattened by that one. But we're fine. Just waited a little longer than necessary. Um, yeah, so we just got this panoramic view of the three windmills. Um, I like how the level just like shows off how pretty the level is occasionally. And there are two paths through the three windmills. There's the upper route and the lower route. And just staying on the lower route, of course, um, turns out to be faster because we get to hold right a lot. Here's another musical note. Here's the wind trying to mess with us. The wind cooperated. That's awesome. It did not seem so wild that time. Yeah. If it start, sometimes it starts blowing downward, um, and then you can't make your jumps. All right. So anyway, now it's time to hail a taxi. And by taxi, I mean that fish thing, dragon thing, whatever it is that's been floating around in the background of the level. And by hail, I mean ring these three bells and the taxi's gonna bring us to the boss. And Porch is like, holy heck. We're skipping most of it. But I really want to shout out the writing in this video game. The the dialogue that between the characters are exceptionally well written and rather funny. Yeah, I wish I didn't have to just like turbo mash through all of it because the dialogue is so much fun. And that's why I'm like taking the time to try to explain what's going on. Anyway, now it's time to climb on those notes that uh, Mr. Geiger left behind for us. And with the help of our double jump, we do just... Oh, heck, no! Wait, what? Okay, cool. It didn't send me back to the start. <laughs> anyway, here is Caterpillager, Destroyer of Spring. And it's gonna send these shockwaves at us. Uh, fortunately, they don't work when we're standing right next to it. It does not take damage in this form. Now we just gotta whack it a few more times. And there we go. <laughs> Good night, Kate Lipsy. <laughs> Nazaita soto ni haru no kaze Utsuta hitomi hanaka gami Senopi shite mita kimono kashiki Hatashi temiteru 
Kyo no Kashiki. Alright, now we get another fairy, another petal, who's going to merge with us and become part of our soul again. And when Porch gets back to her room, she's gonna like remark on like the change that she feels when she gets uh when she gets one of the fairies, one of the petals of her soul back, and I feel like, you know, it's a feeling that maybe some of us can relate to. Anyway, we are very happy. We have fully brought back spring. There are cherry blossom petals falling and everything. And we get our bonus pathet again. But you know, again, it just it is never gonna matter. And it's time to go to sleep, because we got another petal. Good night, world. And once again we get the morning routine. And we're about to do the uh, thing where we actually need to craft a pathet. And I'm going to save um, because I'm realizing if I mess it up, that would be very bad. Um, but yeah. So we go to the crafting room. And now it's time to take apart some of these objects that we found in the level. Uh, I need to take apart a sundial. Okay, so here's how this works. We rotate the thing and hit a button on the appropriate spot. And one of the, and you just have to know where these spots are or you have to find them. And that gives us the three ingredients that we can use to make pathets out of. Um, and now we take apart an offering plate. Get a snowflake and some wheat and a pillar. That is what offering plates are fundamentally made of. And we take apart a necklace, which it's very easy to find the three significant points on this necklace, and it's made of clouds and flags and whatever the heck that is. I have absolutely no idea. Um, so that's all the stuff we need to decode. And now we need to assemble them into a pathet, which is called remixing. Um, and so I go to pathet number seven, and it's made of rest, vitality, variation, and purity. And so this is going to give us our companion for the run, Healyhoo. It heals us. Healing is very important because, again, there are not that many opportunities you get to, to heal. Like, the end of a level doesn't heal you. Um, like, beating a boss doesn't heal you. Um, anyway, cool. Let's go talk to Stray Nap because we've got another city hall meeting to go to. So we're heading into the meeting and get almost hit in the face with a door because there is a very excitable cow bartender leaving the meeting. Um, we're going to meet uh, him again in a bit, and here's the meeting. Some slightly new faces here. Um, this, uh, this baron who is a bear who we are not going to interact with very much. Um, the children are here at the meeting, um, and Melee's like, hey, everyone in town needs to be careful about going out of town. Turns out that there are, like, platforming levels with monsters. Um, and now the headmaster's here to drag the children out of the city hall meeting. How dare they perform, like, how dare they participate in civics instead of, like, learning music or something. Um, have we seen the cow yet? Have we seen the cow yet? Um, I mean, he, we, he was just rushing out of the meeting. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, that, that cow is my favorite character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're about to talk to him again. All right. 
So yeah, the thing is that if we want to interact with a character in a level, we have to meet them in Napple Town first. And this Winky seems to be an exception for whatever reason, um, which is good. Um, but yes, here we are in the Kettle Bar. Here's Jackson the Cow, who's the bartender of the Kettle Bar. And um, yeah, we're, for some reason, even though everything about this place is weird, we're a little weirded out by a talking cow. But anyway... just works the word moo into a lot of things and let's go to the level called hydrangea yeah there are there are a lot of sneaky word moo into all the words yes. so we completed the spring levels and now we're into the summer levels and here in the land of hydrangea or the time of hydrangea or whatever this is the problem is that it is raining all the time and things are a little wet So we're going to need to cross this uh, lake on our snail boat, which, despite appearances, goes reasonably fast. As long as we hold forward. Did you grab the healy boot? <laughs> wow. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for pointing that out to Hario. I forgot my healy hoo. The, uh, the face that just overcame Arborelia is, is, is really a good one. I yeah. wish I could describe it succinctly. I forgot. Yeah. Wow. Probably would have noticed in a minute or so. Anyway. I think we'll do fine in this level, but it does mean I need to take another trip home. I believe that those, those lily pads are on a global cycle, so they're kind of always different. Okay, and here I'm going to go get um, another napple seed from the chest. That's our third one. But yeah, thank you for being on top of things, Ariel. <laughs> Speedrun manager, Zahariel. <clears throat> Summon some platforms. And if I don't go near that door, I don't have to get introduced to um, Lord Stone the Bear. Um, and so that saves me a lot of time. Oh, speaking of trying to save time, I thought I could make that jump, but nope, just gotta wait for a cycle. Hey, I made that though. Ooh. Heck, I'll just do this a safer way. Shout out to no fall damage, which um, I think I think uh, Porch is the only one in the game who doesn't have fall damage. So you know, th th there's jokes later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Now we got to move some platforms, and I would love to know if there's a way to skip this, but it really doesn't seem so far that there is. So, gotta hit the switches to move the platforms, get up to this switch, and it pans over here to show us what it's doing. I think that in Porch's relationship with Strainap, she would agree with you that mock mockery is, you know, a form of friendship. So Porch gets to sass Strainap a lot for the fact that Strainap got her into this situation. Um, later on in the game, you start getting dialogue options where instead of sassing Strainap, you can actually, like, be nice to him. Um, and that, like, changes the epilogue. However, those options are not the first option and therefore are not fast. And so we are just going to be doing maximum sass the entire time. Oh, I got burned. I want this heart, though. Okay. Was this the 
level that you said you liked the least? No, no, this level's fine. Um, the first level of winter is the one that I like the least. I keep threatening to pick this game up and learning to run myself, but... Yeah, I, I would really look forward to it because... Um, so, like, Kat taught me some strats um, for the boss of this level because she just took the controller and tried it, and Kat's good at that kind of thing. Well, I didn't, like, steal it out of your hands yeah. the way you make it sound, but... Yeah. Like, oh, let me try something! And yeah. I found some ways to skip cycles on the boss. Yeah. It's rather dependent on timing, so we'll see how it goes. That's awesome! I really hope people try this game. It's so good. Anyway, we've reached the boss of this level. The boss of this level is Teru Teru, which is a teleporting Sherlock Holmes with an umbrella who says Teru a lot. Um, and he likes the rain and does not want us to mess with the rain. Um, and is going to, like, make platforms disappear and teleport around and teleport us around. Um, but if we get the timing right, we can hit him twice in a cycle. And the real enemy in this boss is the camera, just swinging around for no discernible reason. All right, that's how port noise means get away. And he's gonna send some missiles at us. Ow. That went better. Yeah, Teru Teru. Oh. Yatta! Yatta! So we do our victory pose as usual and get photobombed by Strain Up as usual. And have a conversation about how maybe it can be a little less rainy, but, you know, rain is nice sometimes, etc. I like rain. Big fan. Anyway. Now, because Zahario pointed out that I completely forgot my path, I'm going to run home and get it. In fact, as long as I'm here, I will just run up to my room and heal, because that'll be good. Oh, heck, now I have this, this dialogue. Well, this happens at some point in the run, no matter what. We have a note left for us that tells us to find an item on the roof of one of the buildings. Um, and and straight up talking about how in order to get that item, we're going to have to craft a path it named um, Booster, which is a sheep that turns into a platform you can stand on. Um, okay, so we automatically get sent to our room to heal because of that dialogue. Anyway, we're not going to be crafting Booster. We don't need to get things off of rooftops in this run. Um, I would, I'm would. i looking for a category of run where we do get to craft more Paffets, um, and I'm trying to figure out what that is. One such category could be all foils. Um, that there are Items in these chests, in some of these chests and the levels that are like the hardest ones to reach that are called foil, I think has something to do with the cards that you collect. Um, I don't actually understand what element in the interface tells you when you have all the foils, but if I did understand that, I would make a category out of that. Anyway, so that was a detour to home. And, like, getting to those items definitely requires clever use of paffets as platforms and stuff. So I want to figure that out. Anyway, let's go to Once Summer. I don't quite get what the name means, but it's the beach level. Porch must be a little uncomfortable in this outfit on the beach. She gets her stretch in, stretches yes. in, she'll feel good. She's ready. Yeah. Anyway, we found the summer version of 13 Ice, and um, 
we're just going to get a little bit about the metaphysics of uh, Napple Town. Where Porch is like, hey, where's the summer version of Stray Nap? And Stray Nap's like, hey, I'm right here. And Porch is like, oh, huh. Um, does that mean, like, I'm the summer version of me? And Stray Nap's like, I don't know. And Porch is like, hey, let me go check out my summer room. Eh, it's kind of boring. Um, <laughs> and that's all. Does the crafting station in here work and everything? Nope. Oh, okay, sorry. Yep, if you just try to go out any door except, like, the ones that lead you outside like this, um, um, straight up, I think, tells you that, like, hey, maybe this door is, like, stuck shut because of the salty summer air or something, which is like, hey, we just didn't program this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can't open the door, it's salty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've reached the ocean, which could be a bit of a problem. And Serena's like, hey, um, let me part the ocean for you. Um, which which he does. And um Porch is suitably impressed. This is like the first moment she notices that Strain App might not be like incompetent. nice to have a companion who will literally part the ocean for you. And yet you still continue to sass him. We do. Part of the level, we can get randomly thwacked by crab claws. I don't know if there's any meaningful way to avoid it, but I seem to have avoided it. Oh. The thing about Porch's double jump, by the way, is it only works if you're still going upward when you jump. Oh, wait, heck. This platform. I forgot where I was in the level. Give me a nipple, please. Thank you. So the double jump is a little bit fiddly, and I tend to hit it very early when I can because of that. Safety save. Anyway, we are getting to the best boss, and I'm going to try to slow down the dialogue a bit because it is so good. Yeah, I, um... Yes. <laughs> it smells like actual butt. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the Napple Squid, who is going to introduce himself in a couple of ways. Um, one is by just, like, whacking us from a distance rather hard, uh, sending us flying into the boss arena. And then comes the onslaught of puns. Oh, I am very ready for these puns. All right, let's get cracking. Ah, the season of summer. It sure is hot, ain't it? <laughs> Welcome to Long Beach! Anyway, we call him a squid, and then we get to fight him. I just took some damage that I perhaps shouldn't have taken. Alright, so he's gonna shoot some missiles at us that we can reflect back at him. If oh, no, he's gonna just dangle a tentacle out here for us to hit. That's awesome. That is some free hits. I love it. All right, here are the missiles. Hit them at the correct angle.
I missed. There we go. Hey, three hits on the Don't tease the octopus, kids. All right. So, Apple Squid has some parting oh, puns. <laughs> We're <laughs> turgly epic battle to the guests. So fish to Katie. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> well, anyway, we 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 have upped our own pun game because we have defeated the Apple Squid. Is there a song, or can we? There is no song at the moment. Okay. We so... have a donation. It is time for me to take my leave. My hosting shift has come to a delightful end. Thank you so much, Edgecase Collective, for having me. Thank you, Elia, for having me during your run. Arbor Elia. And um, Thank you, I Kat. will leave you in the very capable hands of Tristan, who you probably need to audio balance a little bit. Okay, yes. I can probably take a moment to do that if I have to. Hopefully. All right. Hi, hey Tristan. There. Hi there. Hi. Yeah, I think you're just a little bit loud, so I might need to take a moment. Um, okay. Yes. Um, that, that should do it. So, hi. hi anyway, there. here we are. That's it. Not news to me that I am loud. I hear that all the time. <laughs> no, I just need to get the balance right, because I am the one responsible for... Um, volume levels because of how we set up sound where I'm running all of it so that it would be synced so I can sing along. I am glad we got to do that. Anyway, so this is the Summer Festival and um, like not the one that we were originally at but like the Napple Town version of the Summer Festival. And at the Summer Festival, Piro is going to show up and make us do a bunch of mini games. And so this one's got to pull some blocks around so that we can make some jumps. And this would go significantly faster if I had um, our platform friend, um, what's it called, Booster the Sheep. Um, but Booster the Sheep takes time to create, so we don't. Just got to get the double jump at the right time, and we've done that. I believe these spotlights are unavoidable, and each of them takes you to a minigame. Here's Whack-A-Mole. What's an RPG without a game of whack-a-mole? Well, I may be good luck because we already have a donation if I got a second. Yes, go for it. We've got a, an anonymous $50 donation. Thank you very much. Uh, it just says, name ready a cat. Awesome. I donated for that too. Ow. Oh, heck. Oh, I need to use my Healy Who, which I can. All right, here's the summer version of the Kettle Bar. We need to get introduced to the summer version of Jackson the Bartender. It's very much like the Nappletown version, except he moves in a French accent. <laughs> and there's the problem that nobody's coming to this Kettle Bar, and we need to solve that problem. And yes, we learned that also um, the, um, Jackson the Cow is being affected by having one of our petals. So we are on the trail of the summer petal. Here's Spike Roulette. It's a fairly straightforward game. You stand on the color that blinks so you don't get hit by spikes. That's the game. So, my path at Healyhoo, uh, that, which is following me around and healing me, has a certain number of charges on it. Um, and if I used up all of its charges, it would go home to the path at room and I would have to go get it again, so that would be bad. Um, but there is a thing where when I beat up certain enemies, I get this kind of flower thing that restores a charge to the path it that I have currently have active. And so, in combination with... Um, with enemies that drop hearts, 
that means that by having Healy Hoo, I have twice as many opportunities to heal by beating up enemies. I just got my fourth Napple Seed. I'm gonna have more health soon. There, I just got back one of the charges on Healy Hoo. All right. This mini game is not great. It's the shooting gallery. Um, and what you do is you stand in one place and this um, thing that shoots giant corks or something is gonna come along and shoot at the column that I'm standing in. And I needed to just shoot all of the objects off the level. And this takes a bunch of time and mostly involves standing and waiting. I've just been gawking at how this game has a uh, Dew Prism vibes, and I wonder if it's by the same developer. I gotta go look now. Um, I missed the name of the game. The developer's name is Chime. And I understand they were not very successful as a developer, sadly. Um, an interesting thing about the development of this game, incidentally, is that the uh, game was designed by a team of mostly women. Um, and I think that leads to a lot of the sensibilities we see in the game, and that's really cool. And I think that also might have been how the game managed to motivate Yoko Kano to do, like, some of her best work in, uh, in writing the soundtrack of this game. Yeah, the style is... is absolutely stunning. I kind of want to play through this myself now. So good. I think a lot of people want to pick it up now after seeing it. I really hope so. I would love it if there was somebody else besides me on the speedrun leaderboard. And I try to have a low barrier to entry. Emulator is allowed, English patch is allowed, um, and turbo is allowed. I mean, I don't, like, I have come dangerously close to Carpal Tunnel in my life. I don't want to inflict that on myself. Um, and I wouldn't inflict it on other people either. Yeah, I love uh, when people who put together communities for games allow accessibility options like that because there's so many games mm -hmm. I would run, except I, I like my wrists. <laughs> mm hmm. Anyway, we're yelling at Piro a little bit, and and Piro's like, "What? Haven't you been having a good time at the festival?" And we're like, "You you made us play mini games that like shoot at us and drop spikes on us. No, that's not fun. That's a little bit painful." Um, but yeah, Piro does not understand these kinds of things. And here we come to the boss of the Summer Festival, which is a giant hovering plant. Here it, here it is. It's called a phoenix flower. And the tricky part here is it spends a lot of time up in the air, so we have to like double jump to hit it. Um, and then there's like a long recovery when you land from a double jump. But that's really the the main thing making this difficult. I tried to get some hits in without double jumping. Didn't work. And Porch was expecting to get photobombed by Strain Up again, but Strain Up is over sulking in a corner. Um, he's starting to get worried about something. But hey, we solved the cow's problem. It is not the most memorable boss. Anyway, cow victory pose. 
And now we get to get drunk on apple milk. Never mind, we spilled it. Oops, song time. And this is the third petal. We've gotten half of our petals back. Hooray! And yeah, now we've just been doused in strawberry milk or something. そのおかげで私は夏のペタルを取り戻すことができたんだ。そして夏が帰ったナップルタウンオーシャンブルーストリート。私と新米玉ガイドの SNは so yeah, these petals correspond to the seasons, and then you might ask, like, why do we have um, six petals, but there are four seasons? And um, there are like two extra petals uh, corresponding to what the game calls onward time and reverse time, or maybe like dawn and dusk. Um, Porch tries to call them past and future, and straight up's like, no, 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 you don't get it at all. You don't understand how time works in this world at all. Um, but anyway, um, Stern Apps informing us, hey, get some sleep. We got another city hall meeting to go to, so we get some sleep. Good night, world. And so, yeah, onward time and reverse time are the ones that we get by solving a particular character's problem that, like, takes multiple steps, like the thing we did with Alice. And another one of those is going to be coming up. We're going to get introduced to another girl who has a problem named Cecile. But first, let's water our... An apple tree, whatever it is, an apple flower. And we get more health on our health bar. It's amazing. Gotta talk to the rocking chair again. Is this game secretly Majora's Mask? I don't know enough about what happens in Majora's Mask, surprisingly. Oh, oh, I'm talking to the... This is the risk of turbo. I'm talking to the rocking chair too much. It's a charming rocking chair. It deserves to be talked to. <laughs> uh huh. I mean, I guess I can see that connection. There is not actually any time pressure. Time kind of doesn't pass in Napple Town, as far as I can tell. Except in the ways that it does. It's confusing. Anyway, town hall meeting. Uh, this uh, girl in the blue dress is Ellie. She's the servant of a grumpy man named Mr. Little Money, and she had to deliver a grumpy message for him. Um, and... Yeah, I don't know. Um, the cow is thanking us and inviting us to have a drink at the kettle bar. And also we're told about um, a girl named Cecile who's got a problem. And we're going to go meet Cecile. I feel like I'm always facing exactly the wrong way coming out of that meeting. But before we meet Cecile, unfortunately, we have to meet Mr. Little Money. Mr. Little Money is a big, rich jerk, but we have to introduce ourselves to him so we can interact with him. So, yep, there's Ellie, his servant. She's nice. Anyway. You know, he's like, what do you want? And then he just tells us to shoo. Um, this guy is really a jerk. Anyway. Turns out, however, that uh, he's got one of our petals. That's why we interact, need to interact with him. Uh, but uh, also, with a different one of our petals, here's Cecile. She's kind of glum. She's new in town, and um, she like doesn't want to talk about her past. She's like, I don't, I don't feel anything right now. 
and we get to see her garden, which um, she's like supposed to be keeping this beautiful garden that she would be able to keep, but like some of the planters are going to ruin or something. Anyway, we need to stop her from being uh, so depressed, and the issue is that she is overcome with nostalgia, and she's kind of just got the opposite uh, problem as Alice, I guess, because Alice has this like problem from when she, you know, from when she was a young girl. Cecile has, like, these nostalgic memories of being an old woman. She, like, ages backwards or something. How does time even work? I don't know. Yes. But here's the first autumn level. In fact, like, it's the hub of all the autumn levels. It's called Red and Gold. And we take three steps into Red and Gold, and uh, we immediately encounter one of those houses. We have to go into the autumn version of Mr. Little Money's house. And uh, something's bothering him, and I don't know, why should we care? But this Mr. Little Money is a little different. He is, like, being sad about how he can't, like, give his money to charity, and he can't put on a festival and give apple pies to all the poor children. So this is a little uncharacteristic for him, but this makes us a little more willing to solve his problem. And the problem is he needs his money, and all of his money is at the bottom of a well. So we need to deal with that. Here's the well, by the way. All right, so welcome to the Moaning Well. Why is the well moaning? We'll find out. Yes. Now, the issue here is that the well is a little bit full of water, and we need to descend through the well, so we need to drain the water. And Porto's like, I know, I'll just jump on the switch. And Serena's like, don't just jump on switches without knowing what they do. But it turns out to be the right thing, but we need to find more switches. There is one. And there's the third one, and that drains the top level. Hey, I didn't fall. That's good. Oh, wait. The switch is down there, though. I need to go down a little bit. So now we've drained the well enough, and that's most of the level. Um, and now we get to the, um, what's it called? Water slider. It's kind of a minecart section. Okay, but that boat is really cute. Uh-huh. Everything in this game is kind of obligated to be cute. It's the rules. I'm going to wait for a uh, heart of help here. There we go. More water sliding. Oh, it's, uh, I'm going to be safe. It would really be terrible if I had to replay a level because I didn't save, so let's save. It's a door. Anyway, so the reason that Mr. Little Money's uh, money is in the bottom of a well is because that's where the banker dragon Smok Finansky lives. And we need to ask for a withdrawal, but he's like, hey, can't you see I'm busy trying to, like, keep my records and count my money? And also, all these snarks keep trying to move my money, and um, that's upsetting me. So now we've got to defend the pile of money from the snarks. And if they move too much of his money, then Smok Finansky is going to get mad and burn some things. Thank you. 
And the reason so for the very capitalist power defense. Uh huh. And the reason for the moaning is that it's the dragon. He is moaning at all the bookkeeping he has to do or something. Oh, he's upset. Oh, he's gonna use the pusher device. Which actually takes more more time than if he uses his fire breath. I step away from the pile of money mostly just so I can see things coming given the way the camera works. There we go. Redistribute the money to many wells. Anyway, his job is done, and apparently that means that, you know, as such an excellent banker, he's going to let us walk off with the money. Didn't have to verify our identity or anything. So how do you buy wind from autumn? How do you get wind shipped to you? Airmail! Oh my god. <laughs> so yes, Mr. Low Money is going to buy the autumn wind that he needs to have his autumn festival. Um, and now there's still a problem with, like, the Napple Pies, because, like, the the trees that are supposed to be producing them are kind of exploding. That's going to be an issue. So now we're going through this level. Uh, we're back in the level called Red and Gold, and we've got other things we need to accomplish in this level. And just got a bunch of dodging giant acorns falling from the sky. That's one of the big things we have to deal with in this level. I would really love to find out that there's a way to use, like, the booster path or something to jump up vertically through this level. I tried a bunch of things and they didn't work. Um that it was always just slightly too high, as if they were, like, expecting me to try that and saying, no, you can't. Which is sad. You'd think if they were expecting me to try it, they would make it work in at least one of the cases. Here's a part where I need to be a little careful in jumping, because if I were to fall down, I would be much earlier in the level. It is, like, much better to just fall off the level entirely than to land on a previous part of the level. Let's catch the mushroom. Hooray! I caught the cycle. Again, I think everything is a global cycle. Here's the camera trying to mess us up with, like, unexpectedly narrow platforms that we see edge on. And we make it to the autumn version of Cecile's house. So who's this old woman? She's not talking to us. She's just kind of like staring at the wall. And we need to check out her mirror. We need to remark on the fact that we've seen her mirror before. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to progress with the plot. Now take an alternate path that goes towards the end of this level. Again, we get that uh, warning sign saying we're approaching the end of the level, and we get the save point. If I was really, you know, going for a record time, I would try to avoid saving as much as possible um, because it takes time. Anyway, this tree has got an issue. This is bad. 
This tree is panicked because it is covered in bombs, and it's somehow the fault of that mask thing out there. So we need to hit the bombs at the mask thing and make sure not to hit the bombs at the tree. The tree has a health bar also. I thought he was teleporting to the other side, so I hit, started hitting things in the other direction. Anyway. There we go. There, I hit the tree. That's that's bad. Okay, he's back over there. Got the big bombs. And so we solved the tree's problem. Tree kind of still looks pretty startled about it, but we solved the problem. And then, hey, and we're like, hey, Mr. Little Money, we we fixed your tree. Now you can make pies. And I was like, oh great, I'm just gonna hop right down there. And Strange was like, yeah, go for it. And Porch was like, um, okay, maybe maybe you don't want a large man jumping down here. I think Porch is the one who's the voice of reason there. I don't know. <laughs> So unfortunately, the cap capitalist does not go splat, but he's being temporarily generous and like we're supposed to appreciate his philanthropy, except it's it's kind of all very temporary. But yay, festival, children dressed in costumes. Look at him, such a philanthropist. Got it, yeah, it probably was the other way. Oh, song. Sarasui, Sarasui, Matsuri no hato no ohosochi, Hade ni asonda hato dakara. Sarasui, Sarasui. And we get our autumn petal back. So in that case, I was. そして秋が帰ったナップルタウンルージュリーフストリート私とやっぱり新米玉ガイドのSNは元気に帰ってきたのでした。And we're going to talk to Mr. Little Money in town, and he is immediately back to being a miserly jerk. Um, he is not feeling charitable at all. In fact, like, if you go talk to him again, he's like, you know, some idiot gave away all my money to hold a festival. Who could have done such a thing? Um, so, yeah. Turns out he was only temporarily nice because he was, like, addled by having our pedal or something. Anyway, good morning. It's another it's another day. We have another city hall meeting and more places to go. As much as I would love to go out the side door, um, it turns out you can't do that in like first thing in the morning. You have to come down and talk to Strain App. All right, so what's going on at this city hall meeting? I think this is the one where Ellie runs in in a panic. Yes, 
because there is a woman who is very upset at her. And uh, that's th this terrifying woman is um, Madame Coletta. And she saw Ellie talking to a man who she herself is interested in. And she wants to thwack said girl with whatever that is she's holding. And the rest of us in the t city hall meeting do an admirable job of concealing Ellie. We're not going to interact with Madame Coletta anymore in this run. If we were doing more of these side quests in the game, we could set up, you know, her and that man in a very doomed relationship and then have to get them out of it again. Here's the guy. He's just kind of standing in the street, like, yearning. But anyway, we've got to talk to Cecile again because she's still got this, you know, overwhelming nostalgia problem. Um, but she's not here, but her mirror is, and it's glowing. Up there she is, and she's just like, I don't need anything else. I never did. And then she just disappears into the mirror. And we're upset about that. We don't want her to disappear into the mirror. She seems nice. So we gotta go, we gotta go find her. And of course where we're gonna find her is in the other copy of the mirror. And so this means we gotta go through red and gold again. I would love to know if there's a way to stack together two of these trips through red and gold, but it doesn't seem like there is. Yes. So, if you find yourself particularly interested in the soundtrack of this game, um, there is an official soundtrack that's got, like, remastered versions of some of the tracks. Um, and that's the thing you can go look for on you know, your favorite, you know, video game music download site or your least favorite video streaming site. And it's called Napletail Volume 1, Illustrated Guide to the Fairies, and Napletail Volume 2, Illustrated Guide to the Monsters. Um, and it's a very good soundtrack. It's the thing that I was listening to for, like, a decade before I got to play the game. There are some startling omissions from the soundtrack that it, like, it includes some, you know, some of the tracks that I don't think you would want to listen to outside of the game, and then leaves out some of the most amazing tracks, sadly. I guess they just maybe didn't have remastered versions of them? But that can't be the case in, for, for one of the songs. One of the songs called Folly Fall, which we're going to come up to soon, um, does not appear on that soundtrack, but it does appear on... This other CD by Sega that is just like, this is a CD of a bunch of good Sega game music. And that's that's where the MP3 that I learned about, the rest of it, this entire game from, came from. So yeah, I have no idea why Folly Fall is not on the soundtrack, but we'll be encountering it soon. It's a good song. I don't know. Anytime you have omissions like that in soundtracks, I just assume copyright got involved somehow. Yeah, maybe. We get, like, all the other ones where Maya Sakamoto sings, so it's like... Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, probably something like that. Like, all the, re all the remakes of Sonic 3 that couldn't even use the Sonic 3 music. Yeah, stuff like that. You get entire games pulled off of, like, shops because the publishers don't have the rights to the music in yeah. them anymore. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, I understand, is what that's uh, something involved in why that game disappeared. Um, so, yep. So anyway, here's old Cecile again saying, Oh, what a splendid dream. And then she just wanders back into the mirror. A night at the opera. And like, why does she keep disappearing into the mirror? But this time we get to go in the mirror after her. And here is the secret garden.
The main part of this level is a loop of like four mini levels that like entrance is to four mini levels. Yep. I think it wants us to go right to like go counterclockwise through all of them, but um, I think it's faster to go clockwise. So we're going left for once. So this is one of the mini levels. Um, it starts out with just this zip line section, which I don't even understand like what we get to, get to interact with here. We just kind of drift along collecting coins. Tried to find any way to skip this, like if there was a way to like jump the other way around this big circle, but no, not as far as I can tell. And now we've got these switch like timing puzzles. Some of these make platforms appear. Like that. This one's a little trickier because we gotta get that platform moving and then we gotta get the cycle of that platform correct. The cycle's not going to be correct. I'm going to wait. What? Wait. Oh, left. Heck. All right. Well, I'm probably going to have to do it again because I hit too many of the buttons and made that impenetrable wall. to um, explode a wall for us, take some damage in the process, because it's impossible to get far enough away to not take damage, but it's okay because there's a healing thing right there. Mm -hmm. Gotta use these things the plants are shooting out to destroy the platforms, gotta make sure not to destroy the plants. Like that is fine now though. Hit this and this and this, and then try to use this top-down view to carefully get in the right position, because my 3D perception often fails me there when I fall off. Anyway, we made it through that part. This part is about um, we need to explode some platforms so we can get down, and then we need to get back up fast enough to use the uh, benefit of the switch that we're going to hit down there. is the trivia questions. The signs would ask us things about the game and ask us to, you know, pick a line. And we don't need to read the signs. We can just pick the right answers. What does this ask out of curiosity? Just like game mechanic questions? I think it asks about like characters, I guess like Things, things that have come up in dialogue, so it kind of helps if you've been reading the dialogue. I, at this point, I forget because I haven't read them in a while. <laughs> Just kind of squeeze through there. This is the part that manages to be a lot faster going backwards. Oh, edge problem. Now we get to go to the inner garden. In the inner garden, there's like a lot of like up and down 
stuff we could do, like exploding our way through these platforms, if we wanted to collect all the stuff. We don't want to collect all the stuff, we want to go right. Which is reasonable enough. We'll just hop across the tops of these. Time to accidentally hit the plant. The thing about blue chests, incidentally, is that um, they have to be damaged by something before you can open them. Um, it doesn't matter because we don't need anything else out of a chest. Oh, fine, just hit the explodey thing. going to be a chain reaction that we can just kind of wait around for it to happen next to the healing device. And we're going to reach the boss of this level, except there is no boss. It's just a seal. Instead of a boss fight, we need to have a conversation. Because like, oh hey, we get it, you're Cecile with the reverse time pedal. And she's just gonna keep being grumpy and wandering away from us. So this is Folly Fall. This is one of the excellent songs and a song that was um, left out of the soundtrack. Anyway, so Cecile's gonna talk at us like she's 200 years old and We've got to find a nice thing to say back to her in each of these cases. And there's two choices, and the, the, the way to complete this section of the game is to choose the right answer in each case. And if you choose the wrong answer, then you just land on some spikes and you have to talk to her again. So yeah, we just got to be nice to Cecile. We got to tell her how like sweet and kind and um, and awesome she is and how we want to be her friend, even though if we say the wrong thing to her, she will apparently drop us on some spikes. Who doesn't? is her horse. She had a horse. I had a friend like that, except a cat. We were born the same year. That actually is a really cute statement. like hey we're gonna celebrate we can celebrate your birthday with you we'll be there for you and it makes me like this whole conversation makes me feel really bad that i'm like actually noping out of this town about an hour from now but hey maybe time works differently and so we have solved Cecile's problem, and we're going to get our pedal back, and we're going to meet the pointiest fairy and sing a song. Kaketo, ashioto wa, itsumo, senaka kara, oshiteru no, hiteru no. What a fairy. Okay, that's that's her fifth pedal actually. We have to fix the winter still. Dang. 
Dang, check out those bat wings. Yep. We get two happy versions of Cecil. It is twice as nice. So yeah, that was strain up saying like, no, 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 you don't understand anything about time. You can't just call it the past. Haha, <laughs> petals go burr. Um, so yeah, good night. And good morning. We have one more city hall meeting to have. And we've got to talk to the rocking chair again. And we're gonna like really press uh, strain up on what it means. It's like, yeah, I don't know. I I don't know at all. I don't actually understand these things. Something's weird about about Paffets. Cecile's like, hey, I'm getting my life back on track. Um, I'm even going to go to school with all of these much shorter people. I think this, like, I, I think she really does age backwards. But yeah. So now um, we've got to go to the winter levels, which should be right here. And we're going to uh, end up in my least favorite level, sadly. Um... And this level is Fjordland, and there are a couple of things wrong with Fjordland, and one of them, very sadly, is the music. It's it's a little bit grating. And it ends up in this rather long level. Yes. I think Pafitz yes, I think I I think Pappet language is decipherable, and I think what they're they're asking for a particular object that you make out of the ingredients that they name. There are a couple of interactions that I still don't understand, even knowing that. So, first thing we encounter in Fjordland is the winter version of Mayor Frogcar's house. So, Mayor Frogcar is having an issue, which is his transmission is freezing up, and he needs to hibernate, and he can't get to sleep. And in order to get to sleep, he's going to need some nice warming thing called Phantom Stew, I guess? And... And Strain Up knows how to make it, because, like, making stew is like ice is like making ice cream, right? You make it with an ice cream maker. And, yeah, apparently that, that works in the dream logic of this world, so we need to go get the ingredients so that Strain Up can make Phantom Stew in his ice cream maker. I have questions about this. I might not have answers. Well, good. At least we're in accord on this. Mm -hmm. Alright, platforming gets trickier in this level. And in a few of these cases, we've just got to wait for a Ferris wheel to go around.
Oh no, Zoe has oh, a red brand oh. oh no. It's okay. This path is fine. Except I gotta wait for this elevator to go up. Literal edge cases. Notice that in the background of this level, there's this, like, big spirally track. This, this will matter in a while. At least I'm getting onto these tilty stairs uh, at the start of their cycle. to come back up. Oh, I'm falling down. That's the wrong direction. Yeah, I'm sorry about the music. It is just repetitive and very grating. It's kind of a shame. I love Christmas and winter themed levels, but then yeah, the music. Cool. Yeah. What yeah. the good news is, we're gonna get oof. We're gonna get a couple of better winter themed levels with better music. I fell. I'm gonna try again. Before I... These are rude. Yeah. Let's take a heal. You just gotta get your double jump at exactly the right moment and dodge the electric things. <sighs> no! And the balloon's got to be in the right spot, too. I think I made it. All right. Oh, and then I missed this cycle because I was too cautious. It's okay, it just means we get more of the cute winter aesthetic. Mm -hmm. We've got a very large, slow Ferris wheel to wait around on. And they just had to use this music in the longest level, also. Calliope, that's the name of the instrument. You're right. Anyway, we made it to the jet coaster. That's the thing whose track we've been seeing in the back of in the you know behind us in the level. And now I need to ride, ride this thing all the way back through the level to before the start of it. And in the jet coaster, you can duck and you can choose a direction. And you cannot choose a direction while ducking. And that's the, and that's the rules of the jet coaster. And as I understand it, the strat is to just always go left when you have a choice. I hear that's a very valid strat in a lot of cases. Yeah. Good point. We. I'm just 
Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, I just ducked under a heart. Do I even get my Hoo back? Is it keeping up with us? Don't have the option of using it at the moment. Oh, the thing about Hoo, incidentally, is you can't use it during a boss, which is when you most need it. You can't use Pathfits at all during bosses. Do another loop de loop, get another glimpse of the level that we went through. And we are arriving. Well, that's that's the start of the level, and we're going past it and arriving at a train platform. It'd be really great if there was somehow a way to like jump straight to this platform. Alright, give me some help here, Healy Who. And I'm gonna heal up to full here. Um, because the best strat I know for the first phase of this boss is just tanking a lot of damage. Like, I could try to dodge, but all the time I spend dodging is time I spend not hitting it, so that doesn't seem so good. But anyway, we encounter this train. And we encounter Pyro again. And he's here to mess with us. He's just being a big troll. And he convinces us to get on the train. And, he's all, and then he's like, Oh, by the way, you know, this, uh, this train's gonna explode if it ever slows down. I get this idea from a movie. He doesn't say that part. No, it's a completely original idea. We're, we're a little upset about that. <laughs> but now we've got to fight the train. And it starts out with this staple gun thing. And we just gotta jump around so that we can keep hitting it while it keeps shooting staples at us. This is, I'm taking too much damage, I'm taking too much damage. Heck. So now we get to see the game over screen. And we just gotta reload. So the game provides you a hint on any boss you, uh, you lose yeah, to? Yeah, which I guess is nice, except it does not give you a natural mechanism for replaying that boss unless you happen to save. It's very rude. I think they just, like, didn't think this part through. If you game over in a level, you start over at the beginning of the level with the same amount of health you entered the level with. It's still not a way to heal. But... Alright, I gotta do a little more dodging than I did. Does this train have a hat? I have no idea. the cycle where I can just keep hitting it. And the reason I can tank all that damage, um, not quite as much as I did the first time, but the reason I can tank all that damage is that between every phase of this train, we get a full heal. This one's straightforward, I just need to hit light bulbs with my wand. How could I abuse that poor Final Fantasy IV NES character like this? Anyway, that was phase Zvi. Uh, first one was Ichi. So we have Ichi, Zvi, and of course, Twa, which is a creepy teddy bear thing. I don't know. It's unsettling.
And now we reach the boss's final phase, which is, of course, with all of its powers combined, it is a combination staple gun, light bulb, extremely cute, creepy teddy bear that form into some giant T-Rex. It's amazing. I love this thing. Also, it's like a unicycle and it's got a fish inside of the light bulb. I love the complete absurdity of this. Now it's too tall, and when it shoots staples, they go over our head. So that's cool. <laughs> Fusion is just a cheap tactic for making weak bosses stronger. Anyway, uh, here's a problem for the train. Fortunately, we jumped off of it. Why did the train track go straight into a wall? Who knows? Why did any of this happen? Who knows? Why are we back at the start of the train track? Who knows? Porch is a little upset about everything that just happened. Strainup's a little upset that Porch is upset. <laughs> oh my god, I love it, Zoe. <laughs> And one reason that Strain Up is actually upset is at the fact that Porch is going to leave. So yeah. But we did it. We got through that phase of the winter. Um, cool. Let's proceed. So now we get to play a much better winter level called Snow Corridor. Ooh, I'm excited. Yes. So yeah, again, we've got giant things to dodge, mostly by double jumping. The snowballs can kind of mess us up, because they'll just, like sometimes come out of nowhere and hit us while we're, like, in the middle of a jump. There's also these dragon things now. Uh, the deal with them is if you hit the big dragon, it turns into three smaller dragons. Swag hoop. Oh, like, there's... What was I supposed to do there? Anyway. Gotta make progress by jumping over snowballs. And here we get to take shelter down here. Just don't mess with the ex explodey things. Here are some jumps that are a little bit tricky to make. Especially when the s snowballs just come barreling down from the top of the screen. But, oh, uh, it almost worked. There we go. It's on like Donkey Kong. Yeah, this, this level also has really good music. Very much makes up for Fjordland. Ah, I tried to dodge the fire. There is a shortcut here. And it gets dark. There is a path that could provide light. We don't actually need it. We can still see just fine. Oh, and still get whacked by a snowball.
I'm gonna activate a couple of switches while dodging snowballs. I missed the cycle. on our Healy Who, and we got a heal from the healing device. Ow, and I got spiked by the Mimic. Oof, oof, oof. But anyway. And Forge is like, hey, I don't even have to fight a boss? Sweet. <laughs> and here is the Crystal Palace. Uh, possibly the hardest level? There are some things that make this level hard, and one of those things is ice physics. She's got really good flailing around on ice animations, though, if I ever let go of the right button. Like, the, the, if I ever stop holding the stick right. Alright, we need to take this dragon apart into smaller dragons so that we can send one of them at the switch. Here's the winter version of the mystery gift shop, except melee is missing. Ow. Let's take the heal. And so yes, this is, I forget what this is called, like the tower, and it's got ice physics, okay, the palace gates, it's got ice physics and spikes and places where if you fall down, you fall onto a much earlier part of the level. It's a little bit rude. such a cute game, this area is actually kind of stressful looking. Mm -hmm. Okay, got that heal, that's nice. And if I fall off of something, I want to make sure to land on spikes if I have a choice, because then I just take some damage and, and get put back where I was. Much better than landing on a platform that I was standing on before. Ceiling. Ow. I would only need to activate those if I needed a chest. Ow. Jump too soon. Alright, now we got a narrow icy platform. Just jump over that one. Do have to use this switch. And hit an orb at this switch. There we go. Now we got. Whoa, shoot! No! Okay.
All right, so we get to try this section again. That is why this area is stressful. And how. Oh god, I stopped it. I was just trying to get the orb away from me. Alright, let's be a little more careful here. Here. I just realized the top-down map isn't too useful for that portion either. Yeah, it's a little unreliable. get to encounter another one of my favorite bosses. So this is Porch's Skeptical Face. And these are the Ice Guardians, a bunch of very small soldiers. Like, Do not be alarmed. Don't worry, I'm not. <laughs> and this is their giant voluptuous ice statue. Well, okay then. And we just gotta hit, uh, defeat a bunch of Ice Guardians. And that's how you do damage to the boss, just a little bit at a time. And try not to get lasered. Alright, well they're not coming over here. Oh, they're being very nice to us by just giving us the easy waves of ice cardigans and not like many of the other attacks. There we go. Anyway, turns out that Melee was an ice cardigan or something. ペーターに姿を変えられていたメレさんはまだまだ調子は万全じゃないみたい。うん、いつもと違ってかっこよくないもんね。そうだ。ここは果てな玩具堂まで送っていってあげた方がいいよね。おっ、そんたい。なるほ
I love it. Pop tart is sandwich. No, it's a calzone. Yes. So we just have to do the very beginning of Fjordland again so we can find the mayor. At some point, Porch just like asks Trina, like, okay, I don't get it. What is frog car? Is he a frog? Is he a car? And Serena was like, he's a frog car. I don't, I don't understand what you don't understand. <laughs> Anyway, here he is. And we brought him his stuff. Fro so we have found our winter petal. Neburu toki wa yuki no naka Chikau watashi te yo kire rune Na 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 So there's our winter petal. Get to celebrate Mayor Frogcar not being frozen with a giant ice sculpture of him. And by the way, that's our sixth petal. We've put our soul back together. Like everything's great and we can leave, right? That's how it always goes. You collect all the MacGuffins and then you're done. And nothing else happens. Uh-huh. Anyway, yes, we're giving Mayor Frogcar the Phantom Stew. It's delicious. Unfortunately, like, hey, I want some too. And Serenab's like, oh, I threw the rest of it out because I don't think about your feelings ever. Um, that's not true, but... Also, speaking of thinking about us, Serenab's like, hey, you got all your petals back. And we're like, yep, hasta la vista, SN. Um, we could have been nicer about it, but that, that would involve, like choosing a different option from the menu and that's hard um so yeah we're just gonna talk to minister druid like hey we've got all the petals can we go back to the real world now and like are you sure you might not be able to come back are you sure and frog car is like wait a minute no You've been so helpful here, doing the bare minimum of things to help the people of Napple Town. We've got to throw a celebration for you. Frogcar爺さんの提案で、私の別れパーティーを開いてくれました。ナップルタウンのみんなが別れを惜しんで挨拶に来てくれて、最も、リトルマネーのじいさんは時間と金が無駄だと言って、気やしなかったけど。けど
Alright, so yeah, chapter 7, The Road Home, or something. So this is supposedly the, that same path that we came in on, except everything is, like, different and more rainbow-colored now. And so I was like, well, yes, I mean, it's a different path because you're a different person now. So, this level is going to have a little bit of tricky platforming. Cycle. I got the cycle! Hey Tristan, are you still there? Uh, yes I am. Awesome. Um, what am I supposed to do to get past those electric barriers? Wait, the answer is wait. These guys are rude and I just kind of have to hit them once to get past them. If I stopped to, like, fight them, they would take a long time to explode. Here we have a bunch of those jumps where there's, like, an enemy waiting at the end of the jump. So I just gotta get the timing of swinging the racket right. Oh, heck. Thank you for the knuckle. That electric barrier is also gonna mess up my jump, so I gotta wait. And it's just hanging out there. Mm. Get on the tilty platforms. Bowser level, but more kawaii. I love it. Yes. so true. It really is. Hey, I made it. Don't have time to wait for that heart. I did bring a fully charged Helihu with me though, so that's good. Not really concerned about saving at the moment. But anyway, we've reached the middle of the bridge, and then we just get smacked in the butt by a clown. And he is, like, very haughtily monologuing at us. And, like, we're supposed to, like, stick up for strain up here, and we don't. Um, because, again, first option. Um, and then he just smacks us in the butt again, and levitates away <laughs> and okay so yeah that was rude and then straight I was like wait a minute your pedals are missing not that you can tell from the character model but Porch's pedals are all gone the clown stole them So what we find here is that photo that was taken of the town, except everybody is a clown now, so that's also bad. So anyway, we've got some things to sort out back in town. Welcome to the clown apocalypse, where it turns out that everybody in town has in fact been turned into a clone of Piro. So, yeah, that's a problem. Check out this colored spotlight effect, though. It's pretty neat. So, we've got a 
figure out what Piro is up to, and we're going to do this by finding his plans, which are just like notes with his plans written on them that he's left around the, you know, around the town. One of them is in his own room. In this comically large treasure chest. to read about Saving the Universe, Step 1, The Puroization Plan. So Puro has been convinced that the only way to save Napa World uh, from its imminent destruction is to turn everybody into himself. We have to go learn about Part 2 of the plan. So part one was in Pierrot's room, and because Pierrot is just this arrogant, part two of it is in my room. So we've read about the whole plan, which is that he wants to, he's, he has used this thing called the Dream Camera to replace the town with what he dreams about, and so we need to make our own Dream Camera. I don't really have that much time to read chat, I'm sorry if that's, if you're directing that at me. Um, I'll, I try to glance over at it a lot, but anyway, we're making the Dream Camera. Again, it's just, it just happens automatically, no chance to screw it up. And uh, his note said, I'll use a blanket to dream of town, and then I dr I'll dream we all were clowns. Because you might not have noticed from me mashing through everything, but Piro speaks in rhymes. Um, so we need a blanket. We know who's got blankets. Alice has blankets. Yeah, it's okay, Aquamarine. So Porch is dreaming, and we get, you know, dreaming of town as it should be, and we get the photo back. Uh, we need to just put it back into the machine. <laughs> hey, couch raid. All right, so we have fixed the problem of absolutely everyone being a clown, so that's cool. Um, there's still the problem that Puro still is around and has all of our petals and a megalomaniacal plan. And because of the implications of this, I'm going to go take a quick stop back at my bedroom and save. If I was really gunning for a world record, I would not save and this would be terrifying. So, time to go confront the clown. It's over there. So anyway, Piro is in here having a normal one. He's, you know, standing dramatically uh, in the middle of a crumbling sandcastle model of the town. And Porch is like, hey, Piro, you lied to us. And Porch, sorry, Piro just starts saying all kinds of, like, abusive things like, I lied? What even are lies? I do this because I love you, but now I need to teach you a lesson. 
and apparently the way he's going to teach us a lesson is by summoning his henchmen, these jerks. So yeah, we've got to fight these two things. We get a couple of easy hits in on them at the start, and now I'm going to fight the one that's just standing here because it is easier to hit, and so I want to take care of it while there are still two of them so I don't have to deal with the harder one. There, see ya, Gomez. Now I need to deal with Garg. Hey, I'm missing. Got him. So, Piero's just gonna dab on out of here for now. And we get our pedals back. So what happened to uh, to the henchmen Gargan Gomez? Well, they are now small and they live inside the crumbling sand castle model of Napple Town. Aside from that, they're okay. See, they're fine. Porch didn't kill anyone. Anyway, they're just going to go get drunk at the bar, the sand bar. And Train Up started to say things about the seventh pedal. Like, the clown started to say things about the seventh pedal. And Porch is like, well, he's making that up. People only have six pedals, right? Straight Up. And then Straight Up's like, okay, yeah, there, it turns out there's this, like, apocalyptic thing about the seventh pedal. Anyway, um... We've dealt with everything, and it's time to talk to the druid again and try to go home again. So yeah, we are reaching, like, end of an RPG levels of plot, so, like, things are escalating. Piero the Clown is trying to become god. Yes. Isn't this like the way of every RPG? It, like it starts, it starts with like, hello, I am in a cute town. And it ends with, I must kill God. And it's always the clown. Uh-huh. I'm gonna try to summarize things around here correctly, but like, it's been a while since I read all the dialogue, and it's confusing even when you do read it, so I'm just kind of like filling things in the best I can to explain what's going on here. But meanwhile, more rainbow colored platforming. Just gotta do this part again. Gotta wait so that I can make it over the spikes. clean. Get a heal from Healyhu, who is at full charge. Ow. That's the problem with enemies hanging out at the edges of platforms. Ah! Okay, heart's still there at least. Nice! That situation took care of itself well.
You know, I love the idea that we can refer to the aesthetic of this level as Gay Bowser. <laughs> That's very true, I guess. <laughs> And this level is so long. <laughs> it's true. Especially because we're going to go all the way through it this time. Still don't see any pressing need to save here. Is like, yay, I'm going home! And Stringup's like, face palm, it's not as simple as you think. You might like destroy our entire world. And so now they're talking about it. And you know, this entire world might actually be just like some weird waking dream that Porch is having. Um, which means that, you know, if she were to wake up and go to the real world, it would probably fade away very quickly. And straight up saying, well, you need to prevent that. You need to keep a piece of Nepple Town in your heart, stuff like that. And Fort is saying, okay, sure, don't worry, I will. So this is like the final part, like the final platforming section. It also has excellent music. It's a bit of a victory lap. It's a lot easier than the last part. Gotta dodge some lightning and occasional shooting stars. Mostly you can outrun the shooting stars. Like, if you slow down, then, like, things are gonna take your platforms away, and that starts to be a bit of a problem, so just don't slow down. charges on Healyhoo and one from the health dispenser and save my game one more time. I don't know why I saved in a different slot. And we're gonna have our final confrontation with Piro the Clown. Here he is. He's like taunting us about how he is the only complete being and we are incomplete and he is perfect and we are not and stuff like that. And Porch is like, seems like it sucks to be perfect, basically. So yeah, and now we've got to fight him. Yep, there's the part where Piero just straight up declares he's trying to become a god. But now he's saying, like, Napple Town will disappear. Is that really what you want? And so I was like, I believe in Porch. And now we gotta fight. So there's three phases to this boss. And this is the first. Oof. And it's pretty straightforward. You run at him and hit him a lot. Sometimes you even get two hits in on him. And dodge the giant laser with your double jump. Ow. Did not dodge that giant laser. It's okay, though. Hey, I got three hits in on him. Ow. Alright, so that's phase one. 
I have some interesting news, which is that I ended up, like, ahead of pace. This might be the world record. But I've got to get through phase two of the boss, which is the hard phase. The problem is, he spends a lot of time hanging out out there, where it's hard to hit him. Oof. And the other problem is these mushroom crabs that just keep coming at you and will stunlock you if you don't get rid of them. And here's more of them. Ow, I should get lasered a little less. All right, We've got sunflowers shooting needles at us. This is fine. We've got two hits in them there. More sunflower. Oof. Ow. Oh, need another hit there. Got to dodge some ice crystals, mostly just by watching to see if we're in their shadow. Cool. We're not. Here's the mushroom crabs, they're back. Oh. Ow. Gotta dodge some fire aphids or whatever those are. Ow. This is close. All right, that's phase two. And phase three of the boss kind of reminds me of like the end of Undertale, which is like everything's happening at once, but it keeps dropping health for you, so you can't actually reasonably fail it. But we just gotta double jump and mash and not get mushroom crabbed and... And that's... That's the game. Well, that's it's not time yet, because this is all songs, and there is a song left to sing. There is an ending song in this game. But the fun fact is that I don't actually have to hit the controls anymore, and so this is the world record. By about a minute 27. Huh. <sighs> Hi, cat. Thank you. Anyway, so I, we've gotten the last actual hit on the boss, but there's still like a bunch of drama that needs to happen here. And yeah, like, I died to a boss in this, and I had to take an extra trip home, and I, you know, I made a couple of mistakes, but like, I haven't had a run of this yet without some mistakes. So, this all worked in the end. Anyway, the flower clock is spinning out of control. Stopping on Doom O'Clock, I don't know. And at this point, Serena's gonna be like, you know, there's no choice, you have to do it. Remix the seventh pedal. And Forge is like, not the seventh pedal! <laughs> to remix the elusive seventh pedal. It's a pun, you see, because Porch's name is either Porch Aresia or Porch Illusia. And apparently the way that we get the seventh pedal is by hitting a phoenix flower seed very hard with our racket. Um, and... More taunting from the clown, more straight up believing in porch. And this, yeah, this game is so pretty and so colorful. And so 2000 era 3D. It's wonderful. We're out of time. Do it now, porch. But, 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 SN! Yeah, and I love Porch's facial expressions, especially the skeptical face. It's 
So that happened. And now Portis is like temporarily the goddess of this world. Or maybe she always was. You know, like, Porch seems to have, like, a whole lot of significance in this world, and so it's a little confusing that the plot started with her getting taken to Napple Town by accident. Um, and we get to read a little bit about that from Stray Nap's point of view. If you, after you, if you, like, save your game once you've beaten it, you can go read Stray Nap's diary. And he, like, speculates about how, like, actually Piro set up the whole confusion that he planted a cat named Porsche. Um, at the festival, so on and so on. I forget the details. It actually does try to explain it a little bit. But anyway, right now we've just got this dramatic silent part where Porch is this actual goddess for a moment. The goddess Illusia. Everlasting slumber inside a rainbow of vivid colors. And this is going to bring us to the ending song. Porch returns to the summer festival in the real world where she started and takes a look around. And you might notice that things in the summer festival are like things that were in the game. Kizuku Sanate in Shitachi Mahu Tokimo Hizashina Yai Batachi Tobu Tokimo Inochino Kakera Tachi Chiru Tokimo Tsumetai Hikari Tachi Furu Tokimo And that is time. And well, it looks like uh, it looks like we stopped the timer at the uh, final boss, but uh, you said you had uh, a timer on your side, right? Yeah, yeah, I did. It's two fifty-eight twenty-nine. And the previous the the previous record was like two seconds short of three hours. So yeah. Oh, cool. This this game is amazing. I'm I'm glad I got to uh, yeah. 
yeah. to be I'm, here for it. I'm glad you got to be here for it. I'm glad for everyone here who uh, who stayed up to experience this game and uh, to experience the world record and to put up with my singing. Yeah, so there's credits. If the next run's ready to go, we do not have to hang around through the credits. It's also a good song. Um, well, uh, the only way I can reach the stream is through your audio, oh. so I can do a stuff here and we can, uh, we can move on. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's swap it over. All right, cool. So, um, like I said, uh, I'm using your audio. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have a restreamer swap, so the stream is going to go down for a moment. And we're also going to do some uh, <laughs> some adjustment of the audio stuff so that uh, we can move on. Yep. And we'll be back with uh, Sayonara Wild Hearts, which is a game I've never heard of, and I'm incredibly excited for it. It's so good. I'm looking forward to it. All right, great. Yep, everyone stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment. Great. Right. 